Hi everybody, this is uh, Daniela Ucheoji again. I'm not going to introduce myself because I've introduced myself 100 million times at this point. But this is episode 4 of the Alternative Society NFT podcast. And today we have Didi. So Didi is in the music business and she's going to talk to us about her experiences in the music industry Um how because that's also a different field too and a lot of people don't know that music business is a little bit different than normal business so hello didi what's going on what's going on thank you for having me you're You're doing a lot these days Uh you're aware of yourself now aren't you Uh, (laughs) it's it's funny that i have to act like i don't know you just to make this Uh. cool but Yes, so uh, so I want to talk to you about your career in the music business. Can you tell us or walk us through how you got into the music business? Start from the uh, from the first parts. This 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 tale. Um, I'll keep it as short as possible. Well, my name is Didi. Well, everybody knows me as Didi. My full name is Chimdema Madufur. The entertainment space. I'd always been fascinated by the entertainment space. My parents uh, had everything to do with the entertainment space in their time. However, I didn't even know I was going to end up there. I studied cell biology and genetics in school. Um, my favorite course was forensics. I always saw myself working with the CIA. Um, but yeah, you know, man plans and God does what he does. Uh, after school, I had to choose between going uh, further in school to do uh, forensics or just going with what I already had experience in. And what I already had experience with was entertainment because I had to go to school and I had to work at the same time. And the only job I could get that had the flexibility that I needed for being a full-time student was entertainment. I had my own show on NTA. There for five years, I was the youngest staff, um, and that's where I kind of met a lot of our big artists now. Um, um, Banky W and a lot of other people I had met at the time because they had come on my show. So, finishing school, my sister um, used to be best friends with Shay uh, Shay, and Shay Shay was moving back to Nigeria after being in a band from above. I'm working with Beyonce's father in her career. She wanted to take, um, chase a solo career in Nigeria and she was relocated. So my sister put me in touch with her and I was pretty young. I wasn't a manager at the time. I just knew a lot of people. I didn't know what to do with all those contacts. I didn't know what to do with all that experience. And I had to start from the bottom. I started as a personal assistant grew together, I went from personal assistant to personal manager to road manager and then to back to a role called personal manager all over again. But this spot now helped me do a lot of the things I had learned um, from the start as an official career. So yeah, that's how I got thrown in the deep end with entertainment um, and with an artist on my hand. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Um, so I know that the music business is a little bit different than normal business. Can you explain to us like the difference between the music business and regular business? Um, well, music business and business are a little bit similar rather than different. But if you're talking specifically about how it's different, it's um, a trade for the discovery, harnessing, um, development, and exploitation of music for either commercial reasons or whatever reasons are personal or best known to you. Um, The knowledge of the music industry and how it works has its own terms and conditions, has its own rules that it abides by, um, or that it's run by, and these things help it give money, fame, 
and um, how would I call it wanton or creation of fans and what they want from you it gives the ability for them to want those things from you um, yeah so a lot but a lot of artists don't know about music business and um, the basic business that we know about is buying and selling exchange of value for money both cash or kind, whatever. Uh, but yeah, they are similar, but it's just very little differences, you know, that goes into it. So what is, what would you say is your experience being like, I know this is like a male dominated space. So what is your, thinking of the best way to rephrase it. So being a woman in that space, what has your experience been? <laughs> it's been trying <laughs> because I'm not going to sit here and cap. That's one thing I won't do. It's been trying, um, but it's been a journey, and um, it's a male-dominated industry, like you said, or a male-dominated field. So, being a woman in that field, you have to be just a little bit louder, just a little bit sterner, just a little bit more focused and balance your discipline. Uh, discipline, I'll say, because there's a lot that is expected of women in general. Have kids, get married, build a home, have a family, raise a family, mm-hmm. um, be a mom, uh, but at the same time still remain a daughter. That's a lot of things for us to balance. And at the time when I started this career, there were not a lot of females in this career. It was mostly males. So it's been trying, but I decided I wanted to do this. So I did put my back into it and I've had to, you know, tough it out. And I think myself and a couple of other females who have been able to do it have proven that it's possible for this to be a career for a woman and a successful one at that. Do you enjoy doing it? I love it. <laughs> I love it. Sometimes when I, like now I'm taking a short break. Um, and I'm still working. You know, even though I'm on break, I'm still working. It, it just gets to a point where your life is so, like, up and down, always in motion, or you're always busy. And then suddenly it just goes quiet. And then that quietness just makes you feel like you're not part of anything. So you find yourself gravitating towards, I love it. I love the adrenaline of it. I love that it, it, it excites my mind. I want to do more. I'm always thinking of ways to make people better, always linking deeds. Um, yeah, I love it. I love my job. Huh? <laughs> so in 10 years, I think, okay, what's the best way to rephrase this? So in 10 years, if you were still in the music industry, where would you want to be in that same industry? I know that's a deep question. You can think about it for a second. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, I think I know where I want to see myself. I want to see myself um, at a seat not just any seat at a seat at the table at one of the great labels in the world making decisions that bridge the gap and create opportunities for African artists and not just Nigerian artists African artists um, creating spaces for them globally giving them opportunities to come out and show their craft, to be able to showcase themselves to the world, to be able to be patted on the back for what they do, to be respected for the way they do it. Yeah, I see myself being in a position where I have the power to create a space or a niche for them to exist in, but at the same time also be able to bridge a gap that will not just work for artists in my generation, but for a lot of other generations to come long after I'm gone. And that's important to me, to be, you know, at the forefront of how it all began. 
I want to be remembered for that as well. So that brings me to my next question. So what do you think? I know this is very annoying. But what do you think is the difference between uh, an Afrobeat artist in my generation, which is Gen Z, and in your generation? What is the difference between the artists? The big difference. Well, Afrobeat artists? Yes. Um, you guys have... So I like to I like to um, use this illustration with a lot of artists from generations before me because I like to think I'm in a generation that is between a generation and your generation. So we are naturally bridges, but I like to see the generation before me as artists who painted with a certain style. They painted with a certain style. They painted in certain colors. And the difference with your generation of artists is they embody everything an artist is. You guys want to experiment with painting on the dance ceiling, on the floor, on the carpets, on the doors, on the fridge. Everywhere is your canvas. And you guys want to play with colors and you guys want to mix colors. You're not so quick to adapt to the colors or the patterns of the generation before me. But when you do touch or come in contact with it and like or vibe to it, you create, um, what do we call it in science? You see, when, when, um, when, uh, when a virus morphs into something else, it's like how you find, find different strains of something. You guys create those different strains of music or different strains of art. That is admirable especially for someone like me who's kind of reserved or kind of set in my ways i admire the the i admire not the it's not hunger i admire the freedom you have there's a freedom there's a free spirit you guys have and you express unapologetically and i admire that it's very very different from my generation and the generation before me does that make any sense, dear Gen Z? <laughs> it makes sense. Activist. It makes sense. <laughs> we have coconut head, but it's for a good cause. <laughs> for a good cause. Okay, how yeah. about you as a brand? Do you see yourself becoming like a brand of your own eventually? Where, okay, Diddy is like a plug in the music industry, or do you see yourself forever being part of? probably a record label or part of like an artist's journey or something like that part of an artist's journey make it part of a lot of artists journey um part of a label yeah at some point um however instead of boxing it to being a part of an artist's life or part of a label I would like to say I see myself um, being a part of the African music story. Um, That's preferable to me because I'm not confining myself to a box of, let's say, talent manager, label executive. Um, I had earlier said that I want to sit at a table at one of the big greats to create opportunities for artists in Africa doesn't mean I will stay there forever. But in order to make those kind of decisions or make those kind of powerful impact, you do need those kind of settings with those kind of backbones to enable you. However, where I see myself is being a very active and proactive part of the African music journey or music story. Um, it's important to me to make an impact. So it could be now, it could be in the next two years, it could be in the next 10 years, but that's key for me. So confining it to a title or confining it to a location or confining it to an office is putting me in a box. Having done so many things um, within the entertainment space, from um, talent management to PR to um, music distribution now. Um, 
in the near future to publishing, which I have a keen interest in. You know, just going through those different parts of entertainment um, and enlightening and educating myself and putting myself in rooms and positions to help people. There's not, I can't put a cap to it. I can't put a title to it and I cannot put a definitive, you know, this is what it is. It's much more than that. I'm everything to everybody. That also pushes me to step outside of any box I'm currently confined to. You get what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So what kind of music do you listen to? I know you work in like the Afrobeat space, but I don't know Mm -hmm. if it's a little bit different. What kind of music? So what kind of music do you listen to and which one is your favorite? Okay, so I have no favorites. Okay. I have too many favorites to have a favorite. And that's, that's, music just excites me. But I listen to a lot of other uh, types of music outside of Afrobeat. I listen to Afro funk. <laughs> um, that's a fusion of funk and Afrobeat. I listen to Afro house. I listen to house. House. I listen to, uh, oh, hip hop. Jeez, how can I leave that behind? I listen to hip hop. Um, I listen to a bongo music that's from East Africa. I listen to um, uh, I listen to all kinds of music because you never know. Music is a spirit, so you never know um, what what intrigues you until you open your ears, your heart, and your mind to a sound. So I listen to all kinds of music. If it's music and I come across it, if it's very good, I will listen to it. Yeah. So, and funny thing is I work in the Afrobeat space. So at work, I listen to a lot of Afrobeat or come in contact with a lot of Afrobeat. But when I step away from work, I take a big, a break from Afrobeat and I listen to other types of music. Mm-hmm. I like rap. I do love rap very much so. <laughs> okay. So if you were... So if you had the opportunity to work in another industry that wasn't the African music industry, would you would you take that opportunity? Or do you feel like working in the African or helping to get the African music industry to where you want it to be is like a life purpose that you have? Um, yeah. You could say it's a life purpose, but see defining those kind of things it makes me a little bit queasy because it confines mm-hmm. it confines me um but there's space for anything you believe in wherever you're taken to i don't know if that makes any sense so wherever it is that life throws me there will always be a space for african music there always I don't I can't think of where I could possibly be where African music cannot be introduced to or cannot exist in. Um so yeah, you can call it a life purpose. Music is my life and I'm I'm African before I'm anyone else. So even if tomorrow I get a different citizenship, I'm African first. I'm Nigerian first. You get what I mean? So yeah, I'm African first before I'm anything else. So it's a life purpose. Wherever I go to, I'm not going to say no to where I'm led. Um, however, there will always be space for African music there. It's just a matter of time. Mm-hmm. So is there anything that you have noticed since you started working in that industry that you would like to or you want to change? Um. Yeah. Um, well, if you say that industry, do you mean like the African music scene or just music in general? Um, I think we will answer both. But do the do um, Afrobeats or the African music industry first, since that's like where you work currently, and then the music industry overall. Yeah. So um, for the African scene, um, hmm, what I'd change? I'd change a lot. Um, the structure of music, education of artists, because a lot of the people who are musically or interested in being musically educated are usually artist teams, so managers, um, 
and everybody else around the artist except the artist so it's important that i feel no i feel that what i would change would be the education of artists it's important to know what they do as a career you choose to sing there's a lot that um, encompasses what you're doing as a career that you should be aware of. It goes way beyond being um, endorsed as an ambassador of a brand or earning money from shows or traveling and touring. There's so much more outside of that that you guys don't know. Um, the sales of your music is very important. Metadata, um, um, sync deals, licensing deals, all those things is important that you know everything that concerns your music outside of what you're directly involved in. That's one thing I would like to change. Put a little bit of interest in the access concerning um, things that bring money and those things that also don't bring money because a lot of access are lacking in that aspect. That's for Africa. Um, also, what I'd like to change is the opportunity. There's usually a cluster of people who are given an opportunity. Um, I wouldn't like to make it seem like, oh, someone is being partial or the other. But I'd like to say that what I'll change is just create a, an open forum for more people, more stars to shine as opposed to a collective um yeah but i mean just to double answer that question it starts with us to be honest it all boils down to the education of knowing what you're doing and what it entails so you're probably not in those rooms or not on that scene because you just haven't put in the things that requires you to get there so it boils down to the education of it you know um, media training artists the, all these things are within artist development um media training vocal coaching stage presence is a lot of things then um, from where your management gives your music to who's receiving it your distribution deals your um even as simple as okay you're signed to a brand how are you going to be a good ambassador to that brand because a lot of people think it's just they pay me an amount of money i am announced as the ambassador i post from time to time about the product or the or the brand that makes me an ambassador there's a lot of things that you are you are a currency so a lot of people use you to exchange for value or exchange for money but if you see yourself as currency and in order for you to see yourself as currency you need to be educated on how to see yourself as currency and how you can continue to stay as currency and stay valuable so yeah one thing i would change all around 360 is making sure that not just the artist teams but the artists themselves are also educated music wise it's important yeah did you get any formal music business education before this or did you just learn on the job? I was thrown in the deep end. I know the funny thing. I can't even swim. <laughs> <laughs> I can't swim. I learned on the job. I learned everything on the job. I made so many mistakes. Still make mistakes, by the way, because nobody ever knows it all. Um, I still make so many mistakes. It's crazy. Um but recently i that's last year i was really excited about something i had watched a podcast um by some of my colleagues and you know how people don't really interact people don't really interact people don't really interact with each other you know they just kind of okay this is my team this is your team this is my team but that podcast really opened my eyes to notice that um it's raining on this end but it's also raining on that end so a lot of the things that i face they also face it and that just kind of made me feel a bit warm um so to answer your question what was your question basically did you suffer before you yes i suffered, suffered. yes yes okay so I suffered. 
and so I was I, thrown in the deep end. I didn't I didn't have any prior music <laughs> business education. No, I learned on the job. So it's safe. Is it safe to say that it's a difficult field to get into? Everywhere is difficult. Everywhere is difficult. But Everywhere is, it, is difficult. But are you ready to put in the work? Are you are you sure that you're ready to follow this and see this through? If your answer is yes, everywhere is difficult. The bank is difficult. Mm-hmm. Everywhere is difficult. So, yeah. So, uh, what advice do you have for people who want to go into the music bin- uh, business, both male and female, and also target? Um, well, that that deserves two answers. For those yeah. looking to get into the music business or industry as artists, my advice would be to stay original. It's very important. You cannot remind people of someone else because that takes away from who you are. Um, stay original. Um, don't just work hard. Work smart. There's so many things that are accessible to you now that were not accessible to artists of old utilize them educate yourself to use them to your benefit um sleep when you're wealthy sleep when you're wealthy and i mean that because you have to wake up on time there are so many things to do and so little time in a day you have only 24 hours in a day so if you spend half of it wasting your time doing the wrong things then it's going to cost not just you, but everybody else that believes in you is going to cost them a lot because their time is also invested. Um, stay disciplined and stay true to yourself. Fame is something that can come but can also leave. So um, don't let it sweep you off your feet that you forget who you are. Um, hold tight to your beliefs. Love your family. Keep them close. Um, you don't know when they will leave you. Uh, yeah, that's for artists. Um, um, for music executives, talent managers, PR managers, brand managers, etc., etc. My advice to you is always lace up your shoes to go to war with someone who has his shoes on at least. Um, don't go to war and lace up your shoes for anyone who doesn't even know where their shoes are at that's one thing i'll tell you for a fact Uh, my advice is also to put your heart into it and always remember it's a thankless job it's a thankless selfless job so once you make that decision there are certain things you cannot complain about you have to be ready for that it's going to take a lot of maturity a lot of patience um yeah Uh, find your center find your center hold on to your center um you will find out that time flies by very fast so utilize your time wisely and yeah the world is your oyster that's my advice thank you Didi. you guys find your center and also see sleep when you're wealthy is a metaphor <laughs> no, don't overwork yourself and then not sleep and then fall in and die. You no. Know. When, when I say sleep when you're wealthy, sleep refers to um comfort. It refers to getting carried away. Mm-hmm. That's what sleep refers to. Sleep doesn't necessarily mean sleep and snore and drool. No. Sleep means one little taste of fame or one little taste of recognition doesn't mean you're there. Mm-hmm. You know, don't get comfortable. Don't sit back and say, ah, hey, we don't blow. Mm-hmm. Don't blow where they blow, they bust. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Yeah. And hey, if you don't get it, forget about it. So, yeah, yeah. sleep when you're wealthy. Sleep when you're wealthy. But sleep at night and find yourself. Sleep at night, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> that sleep at night. Um, yeah. This was fun. Thank you for having me. It was interesting. Um, so we'll have I another have, I have some questions for you actually. Oh, okay. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, I do. What's Let's what's with you, Gen Z people and Ote? So, this is my definition of it because I feel like everybody has a different definition. My definition of it is alternative, and that's being different than the norm. That's what I see it as. 
I feel like I've always been naughty all my life. I've been rebellious to everything that doesn't make sense to me. And when something doesn't make sense to me, it just means that with me, I could be very logical about a lot of things. So when I've tried to calculate it logically, if it's not making any sense, if it's not considering people's feelings, if it's something that people are using to satisfy themselves and not caring about anybody else, to me, I think that it should be eradicated and destroyed. So that's how I'm... You're divergent. Yes, say lo- anything you want, any word. <laughs> and I feel like, I feel like the, the whole Orte movement was just, even though it's a thing that is like, it's a music genre and they, they're using music and fashion to, to I think it, 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 it always existed and there were always people like that. I feel like if you go to every, every secondary school now and you go to like art class, you would find that everybody there is OT. But this is the first time that there is actually an umbrella that these people can hide on. Because for the longest time, you're just looking in a society like Nigeria or even, even abroad too. Once you are not fitting into the norm of any society, you become different. People begin to look at you weird. And in Nigeria, it's a little bit different because a lot of the norms are toxic. So when you are living a life that is quote unquote considered free, you are a problem because the mindset is that everybody is supposed to be controlled. And control is something that should be done when a child is growing up. And once you maintain that control in the right way, the child has a mindset where they are thinking about things realistically and that's what you control. So the child is thinking about, you have to create a balance of logic and emotion and realistic thinking. And once you create that and you put your child out in the world, there's no way your child is going to be, become stupid. But people don't know mm. that. You feel like you have to continue to control people and you have to control hairstyle. You have to control people's uh, people's ideologies so because you think that someone having dreadlocks cannot be a doctor doesn't mean that someone having dreadlocks doesn't have a phd and hasn't gotten that far or isn't already a doctor and Mm -hmm. (laughs) so it's like Mm -hmm. you're it's basically people having putting their own ideologies on other people but one mm-hmm. thing that life has given us, even God has given us his choice. Mm-hmm. To allow people to make, you want to pray on your end that the other person makes the right choice. Mm-hmm. You don't get to control what choice that they make. Mm-hmm. That's, pretty much, that's pretty much what it means. So I feel like, okay. I feel like Gen Z has broken out of those toxic norms and they are trying to fix first people's mental because once you fix that everything else follows so you mm-hmm. have to fix the mental and then the toxicity goes down and mm-hmm. then after that people could then begin to fix other things so i think that that's true that's how i see it got you my second question is um in terms of afrobeat in terms of afrobeat afrobeat and just music in general. What is um, what is the average Gen Z's take on the music industry? Because you guys might not define it as Afrobeat, Afrobeats, and everything else. But in general, the Afro, the African music scene. What is your take? Who is doing what? What do you listen to? And what what what's your ideology on the on the African music? industry even what can though, be changed so even though i'm considered gen z i'm still an old woman so i'm going to answer <laughs> this the way that i see music so i see music to me music is a lot of things apart from something that i listen to when uh, just for entertainment purposes it's also something that i get inspiration from it's also mm-hmm. something that i run to when i'm sad and things like that so sometimes when I want a certain level of encouragement, I go to listen to certain songs to find like that. Um, so to me, at the certain point, I used to think that one of the strongest points that Afrobeat had was just like instrumentals. So it was like 
there's so much instrumental but you're just talking rubbish in the middle of the song you're not really saying the lyrics is not really adding up you're just saying anything um but i think now it has evolved to people actually really now pouring out their hearts so it passes even even though they're they might be using languages that you don't understand and, and things like that this is now people actually really speaking their mind to the songs so you're not just dancing when you don't feel like dancing and you're sitting down to listen to the song it's actually hitting and you're just like wait i didn't hear that before but now this makes sense um so i i know that what this generation of musicians at least from what i've seen what they are doing is that they are telling stories that the older older generations too were telling because i i listen to like this old high life and and i find that a lot of them were also doing similar things that these ones are doing they were telling similar stories that were important and they were basically everyday life situations they had turned it into songs that people could find relatable and because of that to me that was super strong and it's it's coming up now again where people are bringing those real life um, situations into their music and it's also becoming relatable as well um yeah to me that's kind of how i see it um at a certain point i know when i was in second school i used to be like you like is it that we're just dancing and nobody's saying anything smart <laughs> like come on say something smart so that we are knowing that okay if we're listening to your song it can also be a poem or it can be something that somebody could 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 be attached to where if i'm coming back to listen to the song it doesn't it, it doesn't if 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 i'm repeating a song a lot of the times it could be because of the beat and how i feel about the song or it could be because of the words but the song that i will forever remember is a song that is saying something that i find relatable or has spoken to my soul so who do you listen to i listen to everybody i don't have cap when it comes to music to be honest i listen to everybody um so i can't answer that question <laughs> because it, as the spirit leads <laughs> as the spirit leads but i have i have the um, yeah i have some songs that i really really like that i know this one song where i show them camp show them camp and sing and so Duarte. that's one of my favorite songs and the reason why it's not the most interesting song i mean you don't get to dance with the song but you see this whole thing that this whole thing movement is doing eradicating those toxic norms that song defines all of that in three minutes and anybody that has listened to the song that that thinks about things in the way that i think about things or has gotten to a certain level where their thinking is a little bit more mature will appreciate that song and then some people are just looking to dance it just depends got you so what is your idea on women being artist managers Ah. me i want women to do everything <laughs> my own opinion i want women to do everything and i'm a big big fan of the woman movement um i don't want women to ever be restricted um in any field so for me i think that i think that whatever a woman decides to do should be celebrated and she should be appreciated and no one should take advantage of her in that space I don't know how how that space is, but I do know that one thing that is popular is that when a woman is in a male dominated space, there are always people who are trying to step on her. Um and there are always people who are trying to take advantage of her. Um and then that stunts a woman's growth in that space. And she has three choices. Leave, stay, or conform. And now she has to make a difficult choice. Um, so it depends on that 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 all those blocks that are those blocks are usually in form of men. Those blocks have to be broken down. To me, me I'm very very there's a way I am. I'll break it down if it has to be broken down. But not everybody has that type of mind to be able to speak to someone in a way where they clear them. 
to be able to stay and, and not conform. I cannot conform in a way where, and, and also there's a backing from God that I think happens too, because there's a way you would be, you would respond to things and you'll be pushed out. But there's a certain protection that God gives where instead of them pushing you out, they begin to fear you because they haven't seen anybody who had that level of audacity before. And the reason you have that audacity is because of the protection that you know is providing. Because now, nobody can come and tell me anything now. Like, audacity is different. <laughs> um, and that's because anybody that has to go, has to go. And before I get there, he has already removed them anyway. But yeah. Once you meet them, you have to let them know who you are and who is coming with you. Just so they know. This is not a line that you should cross. Because if you cross this line, you'll be cleared without me saying a word. Right. So bad. That's it, that's it, that's it. I'm on this one. Uh, two-way interview. But it was it was cool. It was interesting. It was nice. Sure was. Thank you so much for being Thank on you for having me. Thank you. Um, Welcome. So this is going to be it's going to be on YouTube and Spotify, um, and Instagram, where you see everything anyway. So it's going okay. to be on uh, those three platforms. Thank you guys for watching and um, have a good one. Bye, Diddy. <laughs> <laughs>